All right, I made a video recently on the difference between the words melt and thaw. Melt and thaw. If you haven't seen that, I'll post the video somewhere up here at the end of this video, okay? But some people asked me in the comments, they said, Mark, what about the word defrost? Defrost, that is a, it's a great question. What's the difference between thaw and defrost? Well, do you know what frost is? Frost is the white stuff that appears, uh, you know, on a frozen thing. You know, for example, if, if you go to Canada in the winter, you will see frost on the windows, on your house windows and your car windows. And you might even have a button in your car that says rear defrost rear defrost it's it's to defrost your rear window right if your rear window gets full of like covered in frost then you can't see who's behind you when you're driving right if you look in your rear view mirror you won't see anything you'll just see frost so it's important that the back window is is not covered in frost okay so that button is important I use it all the time in Canada in the winter when I'm driving okay so it can be a bit annoying you know when when frost covers your windows because you can't see but actually frost can be a very beautiful thing um, you know sometimes in Canada the trees are covered in something called hoarfrost hoarfrost it's like a really thick layer of frost that just covers everything. It's so beautiful. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes, you know, you wake up in the morning and the trees and the, the grass and the bushes are just white, just covered in, it's not snow. You might think it's snow, it's not. It's, it's, it's frost and the trees are just gorgeous. So frost can be annoying <laughs> when you have to scrape it off your car windows but it can also be really beautiful when you see it on trees so that kind of really thick frost is called hoar frost now some people ask me the question uh, can I use the word thaw and defrost interchangeably you know do they mean the same thing can we use them in the same situations well I would say yes in in a lot of situations especially when we're talking about food but I think there is a difference um, in some situations it's better to use one or the other for example I just told you about the the rear defrost right it would be strange to talk about windows thawing a window doesn't really thaw you know it's more natural to say the window defrosts think about the word defrost Hmm, defrost. It sort of has the idea that you are doing something to, to take the frost away, right? So, you know, for example, on your car windows in the winter, you have to buy a, an ice scraper. <laughs> That's very important if you drive in Canada. And you, you have to scrape the frost off your windows before you drive. Or if you push the rear defrost button, you're you're not really doing anything physically, but you're pushing the button and that is causing the rear window to defrost, right? So it sort of has the idea that you're doing something, you know, or for example, if your freezer gets full of frost, frost just builds up in your freezer and then you have to defrost your freezer, okay? Um, then you might unplug the fridge and you might take a knife or something and chip away at the frost to defrost your freezer. Okay, so, so that's what defrost sort of, it has the idea that you're doing something. Now, with the word thaw, it sort of has the idea that you're, it's just something is happening naturally. Okay, it's happening organically. Like, for example, if you, uh, if you freeze some soup, let's say you, you you make a big batch of soup and you put it in your freezer and you're going to eat it throughout the week okay then you would take the soup out of your freezer and just let it thaw you know you might just put it on the counter and uh, and you just let it thaw 
Okay, it doesn't really melt. We wouldn't use the word melt, even though soup is mostly water, right? So you might think a better word would be melt. But actually with foods that we freeze, you know, it's, it's better to use the word thaw. Okay, and like I said, thaw is just sort of happening naturally. It would be weird to use the word defrost with soup. I think, I think you could say it. Okay, you could use, with food, you could use these words interchangeably. If you buy some chicken, right, you put the chicken in the freezer and, and then when you want to eat it, you would take it out of the freezer to let it defrost or thaw. Okay, so I think you could use both words interchangeably for m some loud construction noises. Can you hear those? Someone is using a jackhammer. Mm, that doesn't make me happy. I lose focus. I'll try to finish this lesson anyway. Okay, so I would say that's the difference between defrost and thaw. Thaw is sort of a natural process that occurs. Man, that's distracting. I hate jackhammers. You know what a jackhammer is? It's like it's that, that uh, really loud noise. Someone must be renovating their apartment. Okay, but in Canada, in the winter, okay, the ground freezes. Okay, and it, you know, even if there's no snow on the ground, it's it's frozen, right? And you can't dig. You can't you can't dig a hole in the ground because it's frozen. But in the springtime, when the weather warms up, then the ground thaws. The ground thaws. You could say that the ground defrosts probably, but I think a better I think it would be better to say the ground thaws because because it's just a natural process. Now with foods, I think if the food is raw, if you buy like a raw turkey for Thanksgiving and you put the turkey in the freezer, you're going to take it out in the future to cook it, right? You're going to need to cook the, the raw turkey. Then I would say so for, for uncooked foods, it would be possible to use the word defrost, but you could use thaw too. But for cooked foods, in, in my opinion, just thinking about it, I think it would be better to use the word thaw. Okay, so if you put some, if you put some, I don't know, some pizza or something that's already cooked in the freezer and then you take it out to thaw it and heat it up, you might put it in the microwave or you might, you might, you might warm it up but not really cook it, <laughs> then I think the word thaw would be better. Does that make sense? I hope that's not more confusing for you. But yeah, I would say there's just, there's a small difference between these words. If you're, if you're doing something to take the frost off, then we would say defrost. But if it's just going to sort of happen naturally, then I think the word thaw would be better. I mean, with soup, if you think about soup, right, there's no frost on the soup, right? The soup is just like a frozen block of ice. The soup does melt. Like if you put it in a, if you put it in the, in a microwave or something, you know, the, the ice will melt, but we would say that you're thawing the soup. You're thawing it because it's not just water, right? There's some vegetables, maybe some meat in the soup. So I think the word thaw would be better. I think you can use them interchangeably in a lot of situations. You hear that, you know, you, you would hear people say the ground is going to defrost. The ground defrosts in the spring. But I just think in some situations, like the rear window and like your freezer, for example, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't say I'm thawing my freezer. You would say I'm defrosting my freezer because you're doing it. You're taking a knife or you're unplugging the fridge and you're, you're taking the frost off. Right, so especially if you're not going to eat it or it has nothing to do with, uh, with a natural process, you're, you're doing it, then I would say defrost is a better word. Now, in my last video with melt and thaw, I told you that those words can be uh, used metaphorically, right? You could use melt or thaw metaphorically. For example, if you see something really cute, you can say, oh, that melts my heart. That melts my heart. Let's say two countries are sort of not friends with each other. Like take Canada and China, for example. Right now, Canada and China, the relationship is a bit, um, I don't know, is a bit frigid. It's a bit cold. 
you know, it's a bit, you could say it's a bit frosty. <laughs> the relationship between China and Canada is a bit frosty right now because Canada put a, wo a Chinese woman in jail for no reason and China retaliated and put two Canadians in jail for no reason. So you could say the relationship is a bit icy. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit cold. It's a bit frosty. It's a bit frigid. Um, I don't know. We use, we use those kind of cold words, you know, like in the Cold War, the Cold War between the USSR and the US. Relations were a bit chilly back then, right? Maybe they're still a bit chilly between those two countries. But right now, Canada and China, uh, the relationship is a bit icy. And we could say, I hope the relationship thaws. I hope relations thaw between those two countries. You'll, you'll see that on the news, the word thaw. If you read the, the, the news, you know, maybe a relationship between two people or the relations between two companies or, or between uh, two countries, okay? Then you, you'll hear it, it, them talk about it thaws. It's not, it's not melting. If we would say a relationship between two people melted, then that would almost have the opposite meaning. We, I don't think you would hear that. But if you say their relationship had a meltdown, that's a bad thing. If you're really stressed out about your exams or about your work, you could say, I just had a meltdown. I had a breakdown. That's not a good thing. So sometimes melt is, is good. Like if something melts your heart, that's a good thing. But if you have a meltdown, that's a bad thing. Um, if relations thaw, that's a good thing. Uh, if relations get a bit icy, that's a bad thing. Okay, so we can use these metaphorically. Now, I don't think you'll ever see, you'll ever see the word defrost used metaphorically, but you could, like I said, you could probably say relations are a bit frosty. Now, sometimes you'll hear people say unthaw. Can you take the chicken out of the freezer to unthaw it? To unthaw it. What does that mean? Unthaw. Well, sometimes English is just weird. Sometimes in English, two words can look like they're opposites, but they mean the same thing. Okay. Thaw and unthaw mean the same thing. Can you believe it? <laughs> so I think it's a real word, but I don't know if it's really correct. You know, I think thaw is much more correct. You know, it, like if you take some, some soup out of the freezer, you'd say, I'm going to thaw the soup. But, but a lot of people might say unthaw as well. So I just want to let you know that that's something in English that can be a bit confusing. You would think unthaw would be the opposite of thaw, which would mean to freeze, right? If you unthaw something, you would think it would be to, to like to refreeze it, right? You take it out of the freezer, it thaws, and then you unthaw it by putting it back in the freezer. I don't know. English is, is confusing. It's sort of like uh, the word flammable and inflammable. Okay, what's the difference between flammable and inflammable? You would think both those words are opposites, but they're not. You hear the jackhammer again? Man, I picked the wrong time to make a video. Okay, so flammable and inflammable means that something can catch fire. Okay, something can, something can burn. It's just weird because those, those little prefixes like un, thaw, in, flammable, you know, most of the time they, they indicate that something is going to be the opposite, right? For example, um, the words coherent and incoherent, right? If we're talking and if you're saying things that make sense, then your, your speech is coherent. I can understand you. But if you're, if you're talking about something and I'm, I'm not following what you're saying, then I could say you're being incoherent. You're being incoherent. So, so that's the opposite, right? Coherent and incoherent are opposites. It's the same with the, the words humane and inhumane, right? If you treat animals really well, then you are being humane. But if you treat animals with cruelty, you know, if you beat your animals and you don't feed your animals, then you are being inhumane, inhumane, right? Those are opposites, humane and inhumane, but with flammable and inflammable, they're not opposites. Welcome to English.
Welcome to the confusing world of English where thaw and unthaw mean the same thing. <laughs> wow, what do you know about that? Hey, if you didn't know that, smash that like button right down there. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I hope that cleared up the differences between melt, thaw, and defrost. What's your favorite word? Are you a bit feeling a bit chilly right now? Well, I hope you, I hope you, when I don't, hope you don't melt. Um, I could say maybe I hope you thaw. I hope you defrost. I don't know. Just sit in front of a fireplace, for example, or come to Thailand here and uh, soak in some nice warm Thai sun. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go sit in the sun for a bit right now. But anyway, hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.